the image and reputation of the Irish food industry abroad is built on exactly the sort of lush green landscape that we see here behind us today in County Tipperary. When consumers abroad think about Irish food, this is what they imagine. Currently our food and drink exports stand at around 9 billion euro and the future looks bright. Agriculture was once the backbone of the Irish economy and could be again. Food Harvest 2020 is our ambitious plan to dramatically increase our food production in the next eight years and help set the economy back on its feet. However, there's one huge problem. Currently, one third of all our greenhouse gas emissions comes from agriculture. In this programme, we'll be asking how on earth we can create the biggest expansion in food production we've ever seen and cut emissions at the same time. As environmental challenges go, this one is as big as it gets. European consumers are now savvy about where their food comes from and how it's produced. They've looked for quality and traceability for quite a while and now want sustainability on their shopping list too. By 2050, we'll have 9 billion mouths to feed. Using current production methods, there's no way to meet that demand without pumping lethal amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. I flew to Paris to visit Cial, the largest food trade show in the world. Inside this giant supermarket, 150,000 buyers from 200 countries are deciding what will be on the world's plates for breakfast, dinner and tea. The scale of the exhibition was enormous, with thousands of stands selling every type of food you could imagine. Our appetite for new culinary experiences is apparently limitless. As this year's theme is innovation, I was anxious to track down a major buyer and find out how sustainability fits on their shopping list. This show is really important for us, actually. I'm coming every two years because we got a lot of contact here. What are the, the, the ingredients that makes that important? Is um, climate change important in terms of...? It's important to know the programme for the dairy industry from the beginning, from the farmer to the end of the chain, actually. And that's how you can measure the impact of the real sustainability. It's not only sustainability on the paper, but it's a real work behind that. Markets everywhere are very competitive. You have to have a point of difference. One of the challenges perhaps that we have is proving our credentials. And I think Ireland Inc. needs to focus on that in terms of it's, it's not good enough to claim it, you have to prove it. Next, I met Una Fitzgibbon from Bordbia, who is launching Origin Green, Ireland's plan to steal a march on the competition. This will position us as the first country in the world to create a national sustainable and traceable food programme. But to put it in perspective, it's about 15 times the size of the RDS in general. Wow, I, I can see it, I can feel it. Yeah. You know, you've come it's in here, buzzing. it's massive. Yeah. How are we perceived in that situation, in terms of Irish food now today? Yeah. I mean, for example, do people see quality food from Ireland? Is that a, is that a factor? Um, Absolutely. We're perceived as a natural supplier and have been for years. That has a lot to do with the authenticity of the natural processes that we have, the grass-fed or pasture-fed beef and dairy, our seafood and so on. But we're recognised very much as a green country. Green is our colour. And the whole idea of Origin Green, which is a new branding platform for the Irish food and drink industry, is that it's squaring the circle between that green image of colour, if you like, or landscape, and the environmental impacts of food production. So it's moving towards proving the sustainability credentials that Irish Food and Drink has, um, and using that as a competitive platform for marketing Irish Food and Drink in international markets. Looking around the stands at Seal, it became obvious that our competitors had started targeting quality, traceability and innovation, but no one had really grasped the nettle of sustainability, as we were doing. In the middle of what was essentially the world's biggest supermarket, Ireland was laying claim to a unique selling point, a verifiable sustainable food chain from farm to fork. What we're announcing here, and it's very important, is the beginning of a journey. So what we're not saying to the trade is, we're there, we're sustainable. What we're saying is sustainability is a destination. But over the next two years, we'll be building the evidence base of actual improvement in sustainability performance 
with the industry and communicating that to customers throughout the world. We couldn't possibly be at this show claiming Origin Green, seeding it as a message that this is our platform around environmental impact unless everybody was signed up. And we need to be very, very careful how we communicate environmental claims. I left the buyers chewing over their options in Paris to return to Ireland for the next part of my journey. Reducing emissions on such a large scale is an immense challenge. So I headed for Johnstown Castle to meet some of the country's best scientific minds at Chagask. Here they're taking centuries of farming practice and adding cutting edge technology to test ways of reducing greenhouse gases from the production process. Why do we need to get this information measured to such an accurate level? Well, for two reasons, Duncan. First, for verification, again, scientific verification that our mitigation strategies, be they for air or for water, are working. And also to get proof for the farmer that we can reduce the losses of nitrogen to groundwater and to air. Then that's more nitrogen that's available for uptake in the plant. That means you get more grass being grown, that means you get more grass into the animal, it means you get more milk, you get more beef, or in the context of tillage, you get more barley, you get more wheat. And is this the type of proof and verification now that the Europeans, the big distributors of food are looking for? Yeah, they're basically looking for a, a sustainability index on all food produce. And that doesn't just cover greenhouse gases, that covers water quality, it covers biodiversity, it covers animal welfare issues as well which is again why Ireland is very good on that because we keep our animals grazing on grass for as long as possible instead of having them housed indoors. Chagas have developed the Carbon Navigator. This is essentially a tool to show the farmer how the emission reducing strategies are working on the farm and to keep his targets on track. We've included within that Carbon Navigator the main reduction strategies that we've researched, things like uh, extending the grazing season length, improving the economic breeding index or productivity of the animals, reduction of slaughter times for, for beef animals, um, changing the type of fertiliser you put out, also the timing of fertiliser and the timing of, of slurry when you put it out. Gary's team have their farm hardwired for experimentation to monitor and test their theories. Without verification, there'd be no way to prove to buyers back in Paris that what we're selling has been produced sustainably. So we've amalgamated it in conjunction with Board BA into this uh, decision support system, which then farmers can use, and it will show them um, how far along they are in, in terms of improving their carbon footprint on the farm, and also then improving in terms of resource efficiency on the farm. Right, so if you take the big picture here now of Food Harvest 2020 and the massive increases, 20% more beef and 50% more dairy produce, that's a massive expansion. How are we going to reconcile that with keeping all of the issues of sustainability down, bringing down our carbon emissions, our, our, our impacts on water, our biodiversity protection? How are we going to deal with that? Well, it's, Really, it's, it's, about, it's about incorporating individual measures that we're researching down here or researching in other parts of the country and integrating those into sustainable production systems that A, reduce your methane emissions per unit product, B, reduce your nitrogen, C, enhance biodiversity, and D, enhance water quality. And really, that's where we've got to move to. Whole full-scale production systems that can expand can intensify what will be sustainable into the long term. The dairy industry also wants to extend its global reach. We export 80% of all our dairy production and need to be able to deliver on our promise of sustainability to seal the deal if we want to grow that market. Ireland's abundant grassland gives our dairy farmers a big advantage over our competition. We can use it to further reduce our greenhouse gas per kilo of milk, but we have our work cut out. In Kilkenny, I joined dairy farmer Eamon Phelan at milking time to see how hard it would be to apply new signs to traditional farming. Hi Eamon. Hello Duncan. Pleased nice to, to meet you. you. Lovely place You're here. Welcome. Beautiful house. Lovely old farm buildings here too. Yeah, we've preserved some of the older ones all right, I suppose, but they need updating. But yeah, The whole setting here is great. So yeah. sustainability is becoming a core issue now with consumers all across Europe. 
How are you as a farmer able to cope with that challenge? I suppose what you do principally is um, you farm more with nature, you're more aware of the facilities you have and the natural grass. You extend the grazing season, you prolong it so that you're producing more milk from grass. You might be supplementing it often during the year, but grass is in their diet as long as possible while you're milking. You're making more use of slurry. Before, slurry was regarded more as a waste product. Now it is regarded as a natural fertiliser. You're very conscious of the environment, like, and every farmer now has to have their sufficient slurry capacity. And I suppose once you have that right, then you have savings by having grass in the diet as long as possible because it is the cheapest form of feed. Concentrates are getting dearer all the time, like, and the less you need of them, the better. Same with silage, with the costs of fuel and machinery. So the more grass you have, the longer you're grazing, the cheaper it is. Are these the cows now, Eamon, that we're waiting for milking? Yes, we're just about to start now. Okay. So maybe we'll let them on. They know the time's come. They're about 50, 50, so twice I normally give them a bit of music. What sort of music? <laughs> but the morning program is over now at okay. this stage, so <laughs> I think they'll be okay. They actually know which spot they go into. Oh, Look right. at that. Come on. Come on. This is amazing. All of these cows know exactly where they need to go. They know what's going on. They're desperate to get the milking done. They seem to be quite happy. And I think with the music now, let's see, does that actually make them perform even better? First, okay. turn it up, and then press the button. I think this lady thinks I'm not very professional at what I'm doing here. It's just practice. She recognizes an amateur, practice. I think. I used to milk by hand when I was a child, two Kerry cows. So this is quite sophisticated for me. So, Eamon, with all of this increase in management and in cost, probably, how are you as a farmer going to deal with these issues? We hope to get a um, better price, premium price for our products. And once you reach the quality and the standards required, that we'll get the return from it. And that we'll always be one step ahead of the costs. We have a natural advantage here in Ireland, like we're known as the Green Isle, I suppose. And we shouldn't have to put in the capital expenditure that farmers in other countries throughout Europe and the world would have to, to attain the standards. <laughs>